Our first guest is a uh, seven-time Grammy Award-winning singer and songwriter who sold over 30 million albums. 30 million albums, for the love of Man. God. 30 million. Her brand new CD is entitled 1989. Here she is. Welcome back to the program, the lovely, delightful Taylor Swift. Taylor, come on. <laughs> You know, um, okay, thank you. I, uh, um, as, yeah, I, yeah, I like but that. You, I want you to realize some, some of that's for me. I know. I was assuming that. Listen, you know, we were uh, uh, getting ready to talk to you this afternoon, and we, we uh, put up the video, I think one of you, last time you were here, and you, you did one of those uh, 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 internet uh, shows after the show Yes, here. the internet shows. Yeah. Oh, my God. And you're in a, a red dress? Oh, yeah. Oh, it was just stunning. Thank I mean, you. beautiful. Uh, it, it sounded wonderful, and it was reminiscent of real show business. You know, they had everything you want in uh, performance. Glamour, lovely music, beautiful woman. It was great. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. That's an amazing compliment. I love the idea of show business. I, I love, um, you know, making a big deal out of putting mm -hmm. out an album and getting to dress up and the whole thing. It's, it's amazing to, to be a songwriter and then to get to put on performances. I, I was really just big. told that the, the new uh, album has already sold like 600,000 copies or something. Yeah, in 24 hours. In 24 hours. Freaking that, out. <laughs> I'm like... Yeah. I'm like always about a half step away from crying, like mm. at any point. And it's named 1989, and this is the other thing that uh, uh, why I'm about to cry. It's named 1989 <laughs> because you were born in 1989. Yeah. Born in 1989. Yeah. I have ties I knew older you than you. Do this. <laughs> I knew. I knew you were going to make the tie joke. Yeah, yep. you got to. Uh, well, I mean, things are great, aren't they? And you're in New York City, and you're like the official uh, welcome to New York kid. What do you do for New York? Is that you get money for that, aren't you? I, no, I don't get any money for it. But the, I have a song called "Welcome to New York," and I Perfect. recently moved to New York, and so the city named me the welcome ambassador for mm -hmm. tourism, which I thought was really nice of them. Now, when you moved, you moved from where? Did you move? I moved from Nashville to New York. Nashville to New York, and you originally are from Pennsylvania? Yeah. Yeah. Just kind of... Uh, yeah. Uh. How long did you live in Nashville? Um, I lived in Nashville for 10 years. Nice town. Yeah, it's amazing. Great music. Um, Great musicians. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's incredible. And now here you are in New York City, yeah. and, and you got a, a house, an apartment. Where are you, where are you staying? The Y? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I have an apartment in Tribeca. Yeah. Yeah. Very nice. I'm really excited about yeah. it. Big, big place? Yeah, it's nice. It's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really good. Yeah. It's kind of like one of those where you wake up and you're like, I, I live here, huh? Yeah. How, how long have you been in the place? Um, I've been, so I've been like obsessing over moving to New York for a year, but I didn't find the perfect place till like, like winter last year. And um, so I've been there ever since, and I had the most amazing summer here, and just all my friends are here now. Now, now two things on that. First of all, uh, let's don't give people the wrong impression. There is no perfect place to live in New York City. <laughs> just get that right out of your heads. That ain't going to happen. Now, the other thing is, uh, the, the first couple of days you wake up and, oh, oh, my God, here I am. I'm living in New York City. That's a nice feeling, isn't it? It's an amazing feeling. And the thing is, like, as soon as I moved there, when I love something, I'm very, very vocal about it. Oh, me too. Yeah, so everywhere I did would you, go. Did you hear me talking about M&M's? <laughs> exactly right. 
So you're really a, a cheerleader for New York. Though. Yeah, anytime I talk to anyone or anytime I do an interview, I was just like, you don't understand. You have to go there now. Mm -hmm. You have to go to New York. Just drop what you're doing. You have to go there. It's amazing. It's the greatest place ever. And I think I think the city, like, I guess picked up on that and they're like she's <laughs> she's the most enthusiastic obnoxious person to ever love New York she loves it with like 18 exclamation points uh, afterward underlined but it's nice it, you know it's, it's really great, nice you know uh, New York City is flattered uh, by your presence and your enthusiasm for the city itself that's good that I thank New York City now, for now that. do you still uh, I remember I tried to encourage you to write a snarky song about our relationship but you <laughs> I, I, I don't remember hearing that. Do you still do that sort of thing? Um, a snar I would never write a snarky song about mm -hmm. our relationship. You're like my favorite person to oh, talk to. Oh, God bless her, I ladies swear. and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, it's very sweet. I have this picture on my phone of us like pounding it, mm -hmm. and it's like my favorite. It's, it's, it's saved to my phone, so. Good you only you. have so much storage in your I, I, I kind of feel like when you come by, it's just a drop in on the elderly. See how they are. <laughs> better go, so they better can go make check jokes about Dave. how their ties are older than you. <laughs> yeah. God. Uh, but uh, now, but uh, you, you don't do that anymore because it always uh, ended up working the wrong way, didn't it? I don't write snarky songs. Yeah, about, about old boyfriends and stuff, lousy boyfriends. Well, I mean, I just haven't really had any lousy boyfriends in the last year and a half. Is it, it's been good. It's been it, good. No, I'm not, uh, I've never dated guys. Yeah. But, <laughs> but looking around, I would think it would be hard to find a decent guy. Because guys just generally are jerks. <laughs> I just kind of, I'm just not really looking around for them, at them, mm -hmm. shopping. I'm not doing any of that. So you, I, you know what, uh, you and uh, Lena Dunham are, are buddies now. We are. My how, friends how did that have. Happen? Uh, well, actually, Lena, I, I was watching Girls when it first came out about two years ago, and I just thought she's so empowering. This person writes, directs, stars in this incredible show. And so I went I, and I did what you do when you are interested in someone. I, like, Googled her and went to her Twitter, and the first thing I saw was her quoting my lyrics. Mm. And at first I thought, um, like, that has to be, she has to be doing that ironically. Like, she's clearly making fun of me. Because I have this big like loser complex from school. Oh really? Um, but it turned out she was following me, and it was completely unironic. And she actually liked my music. And she direct messaged me, and she said, "We need to be best friends. I feel like you've been my best friend in my head for months and almost years now. So I need to see you in person, and then I will lavish you with compliments in person." Whoa. And she did. She did do that. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. So, so we've been so best there, friends there ever there must since. have been a connection there, the transcendent of, of show business, because that's a, that's a pretty immediate, pretty urgent request to be buddies. I think we both, since we're both writers, first, mm -hmm. um, she writes her show, and I write my music, and everything we do stems from that creative process. We have a lot to relate to each other on, and we're also both way enthusiastic about everything. Well, you know, like, why not? Because uh, the, if the world uh, doesn't need a little enthusiasm, what does it need, for God's sake? You know what I mean? Exactly. Now, here's another thing uh, I used to do as well. You invite uh, your fans uh, to your home. Did you really used to do that? Just trying to make myself seem better person. But how does that work? How many, I mean, do, how, how do you get selected? Okay, so this was a thing that I thought of called the 1989 Secret Sessions. Mm -hmm. And what I decided was I want to play my entire new album for fans before it comes out, like months before it a comes out. Party. It's a listening party. And so I decided just the most logical thing to do it would just be to have them come over anywhere I had a house and just hang out in the living room and play them the album. Mm. Um, and so, what was the screening process? <laughs> how, it was like, how did one qualify to come sit in your living room? Well, it was like 89 people in each house that I have. So that was L.A., New York, Rhode Island, Nashville, and then we in my hotel room in London. Um, but yeah, the screening process was like, like a girl taking a selfie, and I can see she's got my poster in the background, right. and she writes me a cute comment on Instagram. Or, you know, somebody saying, I've been to five shows, I've never met you before. None of these people who came to the Secret Sessions had ever met me. So I wanted to meet them in sort of a situation where they'd never felt rushed. They, right. they weren't waiting outside. Did, did, did they come? Were, were they, uh, I mean, was there, were their parents there? Were, were, was there security there? Was, if they were under were, 18, then they could bring their parents. They could bring their parents. Which was hilarious. Yeah. 
And, 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 and uh, this sounds great, but how do you get them out of there? Well, we, w we would spend like, it was like dinner, and then I'd play them the album, and I'd tell them you, stories. You fixed, and... you fixed them dinner? You have to feed people at a, di at a party that's going to last five hours. Oh, my God. But the, the coolest thing. You are Mother Teresa. <laughs> well, listen. Here we go. Uh, later in the program, uh, a song uh, with, uh, from the new album, 1989. Yes. Uh, we're very excited that you're here. Oh, look at that beautiful cover. There, there, there you oh, are. Oh, you like that? Thank yeah, you. Yeah, very nice. Uh, Taylor Swift, ladies and gentlemen.